Hey guys, welcome to this video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a production ready emitter cluster on top of Kubernetes. So I had a video separately done on actually how to set up a Kubernetes cluster on DigitalOcean and they just released a preview. Uh, I encourage you all uh, to actually try it out. And uh, th so the idea here, I want to have a production level emitter cluster running with message storage, with persistence, with load balancing and all those nice features, right? So I actually could deploy the production actually on my, let's say, IoT or uh, any kind of setup. So what are we going to do? So I have this emitter, oh, well, Kubernetes cluster running as nothing. So I can actually go here and um, get pods, right? You can see there's nothing running. So the first thing we need to do and will take a while um, is is to set run this so I'm gonna show you what it is while it's actually deployed so we're gonna apply this broker YAML right so what it created create a stateful set right and it will take a while on, on Kubernetes to actually do this so Let's go through. So this broker is actually sets up a broker stateful set, right? A stateful set is a set of pods which has a consistent network. So they'll have consistent naming and it can claim storage. That's very important, right? In our case, we will have a storage to store our messages. Like, and if machine goes down, we don't want all those messages. That will be um, will be a bad thing, right? So we want to uh, reclaim and uh, store them separately from the uh, VMs. So what does it do? Uh, well, this just says we'll have three of three brokers, right? And I have three nodes cluster in Kubernetes. I want to run each of them uh, a broker in each node, right? This actually tells that. Um, we actually want to run only one broker per each virtual machine or physical machine if you're in bare metal Kubernetes, right? So this is pod anti-affinity means if you already have a broker sitting in this machine, please don't schedule, right? With Kubernetes, Kubernetes is a, is a scheduler of uh, your kind of uh, infrastructure, right? If uh, applications. So you don't control on which machines you're gonna set up this, you just give it a set of rules and Kubernetes will figure out by itself where to put it, right? Next thing we want to do is give some environment variables. So if I meet a license, I have my test license here. Uh, we have a cluster seed and I'm gonna use this broker domain name, right? To actually set that up. So the cluster seed is used in order to join a new uh, an existing cluster. So when a broker comes up online, it will resolve this DNS name, right, broker, and it'll figure out, oh, which IP can I join or a set of IPs, and I'll try to join them all, right? Um, next thing, we have a uh, private kind of uh, address. So we advertise private address to other nodes so they can join us, right? and we're actually gonna use uh, SSD storage provider. So this broker, we actually haven't set it up yet. So we have a service for this and we have service about Bouncer. So port 4000 will be used in order to uh, actually communicate between nodes. And this is 8018443. That's a container exposes uh, to the outside world, right? Uh, Again, we have a message storage, so we need some data. So we're gonna mount a broker volume with a uh, data, so that's our path, right? The update strategy will be rolling update, so one broker at a time will be updated once we do update. And uh, here's the thing on uh, DigitalOcean, we have to specify the storage class name, block storage, and that's our broker volume, right? Uh, so volume mounts broker volume, it's the same one here, just the name to link them. And uh, we request a 50 gig uh, block storage, 
right? It will be attached and mounted to this data. All right. So now, where does this come from? Where does this emitter cluster see it? Well, we'll need to create us. We haven't done it yet. So we can apply this service and I'm going to do this now. Right. So services, um, that's what will expose to outside world. In this case, actually it's the inside world. So the broker DNS will be set up by this. It's a kind of cluster IP headless. We'll just give us DNS name and our port section not useful in this case. Right, so now this will be for internal communication. So brokers can talk to other brokers. Now we will also need to talk to our cluster. Otherwise, there's no point. Um, so the easiest way of doing so is setting up a load balancer, right? And I'm going to apply this. So this one will create a load balancer on DigitalOcean. I just applied it. It will load balance our brokers and it exposes port 18443. So the port on the load balancer, which I can talk to out from outside world and the target port on the container, which is 8080. Similarly, 443 and 443, right? So now this will create a, a load balancer um, appliance. This will do not much, just create a DNS name entry. And this will actually create the broker sets and the volume claims. So now that we have all three applied, right, you, you, you can see pretty much just three command lines. Right, so we have our broker running. So we have three pods. We have our stateful set. Uh, we have our volume, three volumes of 15 gig each bound. And we have our services, right? We have a broker, which is cluster IP and the broker load balancer. Now if I go here, I go networking, load balancers. I can see, oh, I have a load balancer and it's running. And it is also healthy. So here I can see, oh, that's IP address, right? So I can copy this, paste this, and maybe do key gen, right? Now, this is a meter answering me. So one thing I need to do, is I need to create actual keys. Right, so it talks to all the three nodes. We have our volumes here. Takes a while. Right, oh, three volumes created. So one, one thing I can do here, actually, here it is. I can address my broker so I can see oh um, here's a broker and um, because I actually created the, the brokers before I created my DNS name they cannot talk to each other right they already joined and they didn't manage to figure out any nodes so I have three brokers which are pretty separate so how they update it? Well, I can actually, if Kubernetes is quite easy, I might want to just update something here or I taint and uh, update. But let's, let's do something. Um, let's update it. No, it's not like this thing. You know what? Uh, let's actually delete. Right? I delete stateful set. So I remove the whole thing, remove all the machines. So something is actually going to happen now. I will delete all the brokers, but I will not lose any data, right? Because my Brokers store data on persistent 
volumes. So something we want to look at is now load balancer will say uh, it will go unhealthy. All right, so stages right now is healthy. I'm sure how to refresh this. Graphs. Right, so this may take a while to actually figure out that uh, there's no more nodes. Right. If I go here now, it should not work. Right. No machines. We get pods. We have no pods. Let's apply again. All right. Now, you can see here pods are actually creating. So we have one container and I get the, get the uh, volumes. They're already bound. Right. So I have first container running, second container, and the naming is consistent, right? That's just a stateful set second and by now I should uh, should be able to get here right now let's have a look do it quickly I'm taking a log on the first broker and you can see that we uh, already have two so we have actual uh, not name and right now we have third one so we have two peers here right and I'll subscribe okay so now uh, what we'll need to do is get our secret key I have this one here and I want to generate a uh, Key for the stats channel. So stats channel is the default channel where self-published uh, stats are. Right? There's different ways. I have a couple of videos on stats. Uh, you can look at that. So now what I can do is um, I can run my. So I can edit this, right? I can say, all right. Now using this IP address. Right. So I can run my ETOP, which actually just shows, uh, hey, uh, you can connect to this port 80, right? Remember, load balancer is on 80, and here's the key, and I should be able to see uh, stats. Right. Oh, what? Right. Um, Ah, right. So to do that, I need to come with prompt. And right, it up. So So all right, so we connected to one of the nodes and I think we're connected to this one. Uh, you can see there's a few connections, two peers, uh, go routines, just one core, how much memory it uses. And uh, that's it. So as of right now, we just set up a production grade emitter cluster with just three lines of Kubernetes, really, well, three commands. And we have persistent message storage, we have load balancing and all the uh, real nice features. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so in next videos, I'm uh, unlikely to do it for uh, Google Cloud and maybe Azure and uh, AWS as well. So please let me know if you're interested in something like this or uh, other videos. And please subscribe, that will help me uh, as well to uh, get more awareness of Emitter and um, uh, and help other people in kind of uh, uh, 
uh, in IT. Right. Thank you.